<laughs> it's that kind of Friday, you guys. Everything is getting screwed up. So, first of all, happy Friday to you. Once again, this is take two on this thing. You know, when things can go wrong, everything goes wrong. And I appreciate your patience for hanging in there with us. And to do this all again, I'm going to try to bring the same fire, the same energy. You definitely want to stay tuned for what we're going to do today because we're going to talk about strategy. And how do you go from being a designer to a brand strategist? We've heard Melinda talk about it. My next guest is known for it. He's written books on it. We're going to get into it kind of deep today. What is brand strategy anyways? And who is and isn't right for brand strategy? Because it's not for everybody. Well, on today's episode, we're going to talk about how to become a brand strategist with my guest. And our guest on today's show, he's a brand strategist. He's the founder and principal of Finian. He's written articles for Forbes, Inc., published in the Washington Post, Mashable Entrepreneur in the Huffington Post. He's a speaker. He's a Global 100 mentor. His latest book, Bigger Than This, we're going to talk about this because we're going to give away some, some copies of this book to you guys. What we want you to do, and I'm preparing you for it right now, is to share something that you learned from today's conversation and be really creative. Get it out your design skills. If you're a hand lettering person, make something. Write, write it in a beautiful script way or just use Helvetica because you can never go wrong with Helvetica. There's two other things you need to know. You need to tag both of us on Instagram, on Instagrizzle. He is at underscore Finian underscore. I know. Just deal with it. And I'm, of course, at the Chris Doe. Tag both of us. We'll be searching for the best post to give a couple of books away. And that's how you're going to get the book. Okay? We'll take care of the shipping. I just want everybody to help me, please. Welcome back, Fabian Gerhalter. Guys, welcome back. Willkommen in der Zukunft, right? That's how you do it. In der Zukunft, <laughs> ohne dem T, weil Future hat auch kein T. Also keine Ahnung. Das ist mit Christo und das ist für all meine deutschen, österreichischen und Schweizer Freunde. Any questions so far? Chris, no, no. I want to okay, say good. Dank, Danke. Oh, wow. Danke, yes. And that's why you had me do it. So that you can say the one German word, you know. I know two more, but that's, we're not going to get into it. Please don't. We, we have German fans, and I'm going to be out in Berlin at some point in the very near future. So thank you for doing that. We love it when guests are bilingual, trilingual, whatever, so that they can welcome our guests from all over the world. So, Fabian, let's get into it. What I want to do is ask you this question, and it's a very simple question, and you could tell the story in any which way you want. How did you become... How did you become a strategist? Tell me your story, please. The whole story. Um, yeah. No, <laughs> so I was no, born. I will. And I will. So <laughs> okay. sit back. Take your time. All right, here we go. Well, listen, seriously, I, I, I kind of want to start at, um, at, you know, right after high school. Like the time when everyone wants to be a lot of things. And, and what, I wanted to, what I wanted to be is I wanted to be a graphic designer. Like that was something that I was always interested in. Mm -hmm. I couldn't draw for the life of me. Like, I was not a good illustrator. I was not a great designer hands-on. But that was the time where Apple and Adobe came out. And I'm like, hey, I can wing this now. This is amazing. Now I can actually become a graphic designer. But for me, it was always about the conceptual approach. That was super important to me at all times. So my mom said, look, um, go to Art Center in Switzerland. It's a great school. Um, you know, we, we would actually fund this, which was amazing because Art Center is not very cheap. Um, and I said, look, that's great, but I also really would love to be on the radio. Like, that's a career that I could see really? myself do. Which, well, now I've got my podcast, so it's kind of like my <laughs> mini radio, right? Yes. Um, and I, I, I was also a pretty good snowboarder, and I thought at 18, I'm like, maybe that's a career. Maybe I want to become a professional snowboarder. And so what she did, she, she didn't want to have it. She basically said, look, I think design is the thing for you, but there's a career psychologist. There is such a thing, which is totally, mm. totally strange. She's like, let's go to this career psychologist. Um, you know, he's going to run you through all of his tests, and then afterwards we're going to see in which direction your career should really go. And I was scared beyond belief. So I'm 18. I suck at school because most creatives do. Um, you just kind of like you want to be creative. You don't want to be stuck in textbooks. Mm -hmm. um, and this guy has me in a room for eight hours straight through the entire thing. Um, asking me all of these very personal questions. You know, how, how, do, you, how do you do with people? Um, what happened in your childhood? And then he does an entire IQ test. And I'm just like... I'm, I'm beyond scared. You're off right? the chart. I'm like, oh my God, so this is whole day. Um, I should have just picked graphic design, mom, right? So I'm there, full day. 
A week later, he invites my parents and myself um, to go back to his office to reveal if the son is in any ways intelligent and if he has any career path whatsoever in front of him. So we go there and he's a little perplexed. He said, look, this, this, this hasn't happened in my career before. And this guy was old at the time. He was really old. Wow. So he must probably did this for 40 years. He's like, and no, it's not because I have the highest IQ that ever happened. Like, sadly, that was not it. It was uh -huh. not bad at all, though. But he, he basically said, look, this never happened before. I have a graph that is one to one identical. So once he does all the tests, right, it's like this, it's this curve, right? that goes up and down and does its thing um, on which he bases his analysis. And he says, there was one guy here about 10 years ago and your curve, when I looked at it, it totally reminded me of his curve. So he went ahead into the archives and he pulled out that curve and it was literally, and he put it on top for us. And he said, this is one to one with this guy. And we're all like, oh God. He's like the biggest loser on earth. Like, who is this guy? <laughs> he's a killer. Um, he's, a, he's a serial killer. Yeah, That's why he remembered killer. it. He right. had to like hand it over to, to, to the authorities. Um, no, so, so he said this guy um, studied graphic design at Art Center. And he is now in New York 10 years later. He's in New York City and he's a creative director. Mm -hmm. um, and that totally blew my mind. So um, literally from that time where I did this test with this guy... Um, it was about it was about what like four years forward, and I am a creative director in Los Angeles, and I'm a, I'm a, I'm a kid from Vienna, right? Like I'm in Austria. I didn't even mean to study in in in, in the U.S. I was studying. Uh, I was going to study at Art Center in Switzerland, which they had back then. So. That was just to me that was that was really exciting, and it was also exciting not only because it's like, look, this is going to be your career, but. I loved that strategic approach that he had, right? And to actually like look at the data and then to change someone's life completely based on the data. So anyways, like, like moving forward, um, studied, studied communication design um, at Art Center um, in Europe, moved over to Art Center um, in Pasadena because the college, strangely enough, closed doors <laughs> and I had to move to the US yep. and suddenly I'm one step closer. So I, I did graphic design, you know, and now, now suddenly um, I'm in Los Angeles. Um, and at this point, I met this instructor by the name of Roland Young. Um, and Chris, I don't know if you ever met Roland. Of course. Young. Yes, I'm sure everyone has a story. So for those who don't know Roland Young, you can go on YouTube. Not now because you stay right here. But later on, if Chris doesn't have any other show, you go to YouTube and you you type in um, Roland uh, is God. I think I think that's, that's what it, it is. Yes, um, it is. And it's a YouTube video. I think um, um, uh, Owen of uh, Fair Concrete, I think he, he did it. I, oh, I think it was Owen? What, it was Owen, right? Oh, my gosh. Um, Owen Chi, I think mm -hmm. his name is. So anyways, so what he did is he filmed an entire like 30 minutes of the class with, with Roland Young, like with shaky hands like you know back then with hidden a tiny camera camcorder hidden camera. Yeah. i think at the time right and he had it he had it like hidden and you get a good idea of who roland young is anyways i am I'm there in class with Roland Young. I was always very excited about mixing advertising and graphic design. So I liked the big concept, the strategy behind advertising, and then using design to really have a, have a clear message in the most minimalist way possible. And so I really liked Roland. That was his kind of style. Mm -hmm. So we're in class. And we, it's a crit, right? So everyone, you know, everyone's work is being judged. There are like 20 pieces of work up there. And there's one piece in the middle that is just drop dead gorgeous. It is beautiful. It's this really intricate illustration that this girl has done. She must have spent at least 10 hours doing it, right? It's just gorgeous. So you walk into the room and this one piece just is, uh, is amazing. And then there are all the other posters. Um, and Roland kind of quits everything, not that one piece. He never talks about it. And at the very end, the last thing, he goes to this piece and we're like, we're, we're all like really excited. Yeah, here Finally, it comes. Here this it amazing comes. piece, yeah. right? Here it comes. <clears throat> he looks at the piece, mm. very long. It's kind of like, remember when Obama was president and he always had these long pauses between thoughts? And that, that's what made people actually like listen. And Roland Young did that where he was just standing and then nothing happened. And everyone was like, God, what is he going to do? Like, what is he going to talk about this poster? Because he already ripped everyone apart, you know, right. uh, verbally. He takes this, this piece of art that was hand drawn and he slowly rips it into two pieces oh my god and everyone's everyone's focusing on roland and then they focus on the girl that just spent like a night working on this right and it was a beautiful piece um 
And then he rips it again, smaller pieces, everything is on the floor. The girl slowly starts tearing up. Yeah. And we're all like, what is going on? And then Roland is like, it is beautiful. And we're like, okay, this guy is completely crazy. And then he said something that for me, I think, really shaped the way that, the way that I work and the way that I think. He said, but it has no concept. So if it doesn't have a concept, you're not solving for the problem that the class is about. So if the class is about solving a certain issue for a certain client, and you do something that is really beautiful, it is completely worthless for this moment in time. And to me, that was really profound. Like, I actually felt that that was such a great way to get a message across of this is not fine art. This is not graphic design without a client. You actually have to have to solve a problem. And I think for me, that was maybe because I was not a great illustrator, you know, and, and I was always about the conceptual part that kind of like that kind of like drove me. So, you know, fast forward, you know, I did two creative director uh, jobs after after um, Art Center um, and I hustled. I always hustled. You know, you had Gary Vee on the other day, right? It was all about the hustle. So I worked at night for freelance projects, mainly in Europe because I didn't have my green card yet. I couldn't actually, you know, make money. Um, but I literally, I came home from a creative director job that I was way underqualified for and so I had to learn on the job. And then at night I worked for clients and then the minute the green card came in, I'm like, okay, this is it. I'm going to start my studio worked my way through the studio into, um, you know, into actually having 18 people, having a real design office. And at some point I realized, you know what, I don't like to do the output. I don't like to do all of this work for very little money um, and having to constantly grow a, a, grow a business. Um, and it was at the same time where a client... Uh, went bad, which happens a lot in creative businesses. And I'm sure you have tons of classes about this, Chris, at, at the future. Um, didn't have a good contract, bad client. We had to kind of like staff down. Um, I had to let some people go. And I decided, look, I got to really redo my company. Um, hired a guy, David Baker, um, who came in um, and he helped me you know, analyze what we're really great at. And I decided, look, I'm going to change the company name. We're going to write a book about what I am going to do. We called it How to Launch a Brand. And it had all of these chapters in, you know, first you create a brand platform, then the name, then this. And that was the process that we wanted to do. So I scaled down to two people. And really by writing this book, I realized that, that to launch a brand the most important thing is the strategic component because startups are all over the place, right? You have to hone them in. What is, what is a startup really about? And in a way, by writing this and by changing my company, I got, into, I got into strategy. And I think all of us in the beginning are super scared. You know, strategy is such a big word. It can mean so many things too, especially brand strategy, yep. right? Um, and so in the beginning, I basically had a questionnaire, like all of you have, right? The identity questionnaire. And we just had a company questionnaire. And I did like a two-hour session with clients. And, and we sat together. And it was basically an interactive questionnaire at that point. I didn't charge much because I was afraid to charge for it. And I did a couple of those. And at some point, I realized when the clients walked out, oh, my God, I totally changed their company. I actually morphed it. I, I pivoted their company during a two-hour meeting, and they are going to be such a great company now, or, or so I assume, right? I assume that I, I moved them into a totally different, totally positive direction through brand thinking, because brand thinking is very different than, you know, than corporate strategy and, you know, startup, you know, startup thinking. So when that happened, I knew that this is really important, and I started doubling my fee. I, I changed that questionnaire to be a workshop. Um, it's like 60 slides or something, and it's like an eight-hour session now. And so now I do a lot of these eight-hour sessions where I fly around the world, sit with clients for eight, nine hours, and it gets into what I call brand, brand therapy. And now I stop my monologue because that was a whole lot. And, uh, you know. That was excellent. <laughs> and I think people are liking the accent too. So uh, that's coming in from Ghazi. It's like, ooh, that accent though. So play up the accent. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So when you do these workshops, how much do you charge to be in person and do these workshops for people? And how do they find you? 
So, so you know, it's difficult because, you know, like after this show, I'm going to be world famous. So I'm going to charge double. Mm. So why would I say it now? No, it's actually, <laughs> it hasn't changed. Yeah. It hasn't changed in a while. Um, you know, it's a, at this point, I, ch- I charge 8,000, you know, mm-hmm. for, for a day, um, you know, nine to 10,000 when it's remote. Mm-hmm. Um, because, you know, I have to Travel. fly. I'm not yeah. going to be with my, with my, you know, family or with my, with my staff. Yep. Um, and that's it. And it's, it's really the value that clients get. I, I'm totally underselling myself, right? But because I'm not running an agency anymore, I run a consultancy, I have one full-time you know, lead brand designer, and that's it. I have very low overhead as a company. If you, if you make you know, eight or 10 grand a day, that's not, that's not, a, bad, that's not a bad calculation. Mm. You know, especially since doing these workshops, you really become one with the client. Like you actually, usually you, you sell a lot more to that client afterwards because you, you start to really understand that company. I mean, you know, in brand strategy, clients tell you everything. They tell you where they're bad at, where they're really good at. They tell you everything about the competitors. Um, it's, it's therapeutic, right? You just spill it all out. And then you're kind of part of the team, which is totally different when you're a logo designer because they can fire you on the spot anytime, right? You don't bring that value to a client that someone brings to a client when they're, when they're actually talking strategy. And do you find that most of your clients are remote or are they local to Los Angeles? Most of them are remote. So this is a concept that a lot of people have a hard time getting their heads wrapped around because they're saying, oh, I'm in this country, I'm in this city, and the people here don't value design, let alone strategy. So how can I do this? So can you get a little tactical here? How is it that entrepreneurs from other countries are finding out out about you and willing to part with eight to $9,000, which is, for some people, double what they make the whole year? How is it they can find you, Fabian? Well, I think it's a it's a lot of it's a lot of creating content, right? I mean that is that is really it. In the end, it is creating content that you cater not to other designers or to other strategists, but you cater it to CEOs, you cater it to founders of company, to whoever you want you want to work with, right? Um, you might want to work with only banks. Well, then write strategic brand content only around, you know, like the financial services industry. Um, but for me, it's CEOs. So I, I, try to, I try to create that content. You know, I wrote two books. I have a podcast going where I interview founders and investors. And I really get out there to be part of that, of that community and to talk their talk. And how do they find me? I think they find me mainly, um, you know, through a lot of online content where they say, okay, this company seems to be good. And I write for Forbes and I write for Inc. Uh, not as much as I should, but I do. Um, so I think, I think you have to enter their, 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 you know, their stratosphere. And, you know, like wherever they are, you have to be part of that. And you have to stand out by giving them kind of like free ideas, good ideas when you chat with them a couple of times. I know, Chris, you do that on your channel. You know, you have no problem quickly like dropping a couple of like, you know, big nuggets. Um, but obviously you hope that everyone is becoming part of your part of your subscriber base and a paid channel in the future. So it's, it's not much different um, mm, the way okay. I do it. Can you give me an example of an article you've written? It doesn't matter where it's published, but the title of the article so I can get a sense of the nature of the things that you're writing about that would appeal to a prospect versus another creative? Well, you know, I mean, instead of saying how to name your company, I would say, you know, and this is fictitious, right? But I would say, you know, um, four ways to gain buy-in into your new company name. So something where I noted a CMO is is like fearing what is going to happen once I have that name. Um, And the the CMO might still say, I'm going to do this in-house. I don't need, I don't need to hire a consultant. But once they read it, or the, the owner, once they read it, they're like, oh, this is so profound. This makes sense. These are exactly the four steps. Who's this guy? Oh, I'm going to click on it. Oh, my God. The, he only works with people like me? And he's in Los Angeles? And then there's a phone call. And then it's like, well, I can do this with you. You're actually fairly affordable, um, you know, for their space. Right. Right. Um, and then one thing leads to another. And, you know, I mean, I got a fantastic client. You talked about how you're going to, to Warsaw um, in a couple of uh, weeks or months from now. Um, and we chatted a little bit before the live stream. And I, I have a client that um, I got because I talked at a conference in Santa Monica and he happened to be here. He was from Poland and he said, look, I got to do one of those workshops with you immediately. Like, I like what you're talking about. Mm. And he, he kind of like in his vacation time, he spent a day with me and that's three years ago and he's still a client of mine. And I flew to Warsaw, you know, like I, I did the whole rebrand with him and I announced it to his whole team. And so it's like, 
you never know where people come from, but in the end, it is about a personal connection. I mm. really believe that. I think if you're any brand agency and you've got the same old process and you've got the same old upsell and, you know, you just feel hungry, people don't want to work with you. But if you're if you're an entrepreneur like they're an entrepreneur and you just high five them and say, I totally get it where you're at now. And here are five ways that we can get you to the other side. Um the whole graphic design part and the naming part and all of that, even though but they, they buy that in the end, it's not that important anymore. It's mm -hmm. about, you know, you actually being a guide to get them to where they need to be. Perfect. I'm taking notes here. So in case you guys think I'm chatting away or doing something frivolous, I'm actually trying to write the notes for this because this is a little bit more like an off the cuff chat. So we're, we're not talking about structured decks or anything. And I think people are leaning in on this. Now I have to, Bring up this one thing. We have a, a common friend, I think, another art center, a German, not an Austrian, a German this time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he's like, you know what? Strategies is this buzzword. I don't think he buys into it. He thinks this is a ploy that creatives use to describe their work so that they'll seem a little bit more special and unique. I'm not certain that this friend of mine truly understands it because they're like, design is everything. And he recently put out a post. He's like, it, it requires courage to design. Designing is courage and strategy minimizes the risk. How do you feel about that statement? Um, <laughs> against against my fellow closely um, related, <laughs> nearly countrymen. Yes. Um, I, I could even imagine who it is, um, <laughs> but I will not. I will not go that Look, far. we will Look, change the names to protect the innocent. So Look, just here's the thing. Yeah. Strategy is everything. Strategy is everything. And, and here's why I say this. At some point, um, about 10 years ago, I stopped designing. A lot of my clients <laughs> still think I design, but yeah. I stopped designing because I didn't want to push pixels all night long. It was yeah. just something that I, you know, I felt like I just don't want to do it. Mm -hmm. um, I think it happens to a lot of people at a certain, at a certain time, you know. Um, and at that moment, it coincided that suddenly I was able to actually look at things in a very subjective way. Like I didn't, I wasn't emotionally attached to it. So just imagine you design a logo for a client. You've got one week time. Um, you design three logos. You really want to impress them. You spend day and night working on those logos. You present them. And then suddenly some guy like me on the client side comes in and the client says, hey, here's Fabian. He's a brand consultant. He's going to help us make decisions. And suddenly this clown comes in, me, um, and I say, very straight, I say, this one works really well because of A, B, and C, because it's going to convince more clients, uh, you know, it's going to get us more clients, because it's going to look very different from the competition, um, and because it tells the story that it needs to, needs to tell. But the other two are a complete chunk. Or I say all three are chunk because they just don't go, I'm basically the Roland Young in the room that just says all of this doesn't work. And mm. here's why it doesn't work. If I would be the designer, I would be so emotionally attached to it because I feel like I get it. Like there's so much in there and the client just doesn't see it. So the minute that I stop designing, I gain distance. And I think it actually really helps me now to do strategy and then have my in-house designer bring in more thoughts and do her thing. But 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 it's it's you have to kind of like separate yourself from the creative work to think strategic. And so if you're a graphic designer saying, hey, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be a strategist as well. You have to be really, really good at separating your own ego from your creative work and then kind of like it's a left right brain thing. And there are not many that really can can do that, right? Where you can where you can think creative, but you can also think very strategic and business like. And I think that's what a really good brand strategist does. And that's what it that's what it really takes. So if you could if this person, if this German was in the room with us, and I think I need to set up a debate between the two of you, just German on German or German on Austrian crime Yes, please. There. We will speak right. German. <laughs> if this person, he, was standing right in front of you and he said, designing is courage and strategy mitigates the risk, how would you directly respond to him? Well, I, I would say the same thing I just said. Literally, I, you would you just know, say the same thing. Literally, it's, you know, like... Design, design is not, there is no reason to have design if you don't have strategy, right? Ooh, because, no, okay. seriously, because I mean, then you can sit at home, you know, and, and, you know, and, and just get stoned all night long and draw pretty pictures and put them up on like some website where other designers high five you. Uh -huh. Well, that's great. 
who cares? Like, I don't care, right? Like all the pretty pictures that you see right now behind me, if they don't, if they don't tell a story, if they don't motivate you to do something, then they're useless. In my art, I, unless they're art, right? But then you frame them and then, then it's a totally different thing. So the message and the strategy of where do you want your customer, your viewer, your client, your, your member, whoever, where do you want them to go? <laughs> Did he just say that? He just said that, didn't he? Aaron? Not that member. I'm talking about No, no, no. You members. said the fear. <laughs> Did you like, say the fear? <laughs> the fear? The fear. Like, hi, Hitler, the Fuhrer. <laughs> Didn't no. he say that? We no. just heard him say that. Oh, God. No Germans yeah. allowed okay. on this. Um, it's, it's, it's subliminal. Fine. It just comes it's subliminal. Up. Okay. <laughs> now, now, where Red have flag. I been? <laughs> Yellow flag. Yellow flag. Yellow flag on the play. <laughs> no, he said it. He said it. Okay. Fewer. The fewer. <laughs> oh, the few. F -E -W -E -R. F -E -W -E -R. There we go. I know this language. It's the fewer. Austrian <laughs> accent there. Okay. He's like, the fewer. I'm like, who are you working for, my friend? <laughs> Look, you have to, in the end, you have to get people yeah. to actually move on, on your message. Okay. Right? Okay. Let me, it. let me break it down to be something much simpler. Is designing courage? Just respond to that because I just I don't, I don't think so. I don't think so either. I don't think so. I, I responded to him and saying, there must be a lot of courageous people out there. That's why I'm so flabbergasted. Holy cow. I'm like, I don't put the two together. I don't put why courage, is designing design courage together. Why is designing courage? I think strategy Damien. is courage. Because you, <laughs> you put <laughs> yourself, <laughs> boom, the fade is on. Because you put yourself out yeah. there. I mean, yeah. you make a decision and you say, look, I know this company is your life, but yes. I'm telling you to shift this company into a different direction okay. because you will stand out from your competitors and people will love you. That's freaking courage. And I do this, and when afterwards, when it doesn't work out, th that's a huge problem. If you design something and you say, "Oh, I'm so so courageous to design this beautiful piece," um, I don't I don't understand it. I think design is super important. Don't get me wrong, right? Like I am I'm 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 a born designer. I love design, but I always believed in that whole philosophy that it's useless if it doesn't tell a story. Okay. Well, at the beginning of the show, we said that. Strategy, brand strategy, it's not for everybody. It requires a certain person who can dance with the creative, the logic, the intuition, and go back and forth. It requires a person to be a, a lot more objective and neutral, unbiased, to be able to talk about it in any kind of real meaningful way. I have so, a question. Sorry. It's about this. Okay. Related. You're just going to interrupt me. Just like that. I thought like you that. were... You, you were I wasn't. I was, was called a dramatic pause. Okay. But okay, go ahead, Aaron. You've already interrupted it. I was just going to ask, ahead. do you need to be a good designer to be a good strategist? That's a good question. That's also an easy one to answer. No. Explain. Okay. No, because it is so different. You know, like if I... If I'm a good designer, I know the skill. I know how to design. Um, I, you know, I understand the industry. I understand my fonts. I understand my colors. Um, and, and I do think creatively and I do think conceptually, right? And I do solve for certain problems. But it is very different type of problems that you're usually solving, that you usually solve. But I do believe that if you're a graphic designer, that over time, you start becoming more and more interested in your client's business and into solving, you know, problems for your client that are bigger than, you know, just solving this one project. Let's create a logo that's really great or a post that's really great or a website that's really great. And I think it's going to help you if you're a graphic designer, if you start to, to, to think more strategically, you know, definitely. Okay. But you don't have to be a graphic designer. I, I, I agree with you. So what skills do you need to acquire to become a strategist? If I was in art school or design school, what classes would you recommend that I take if I wanted to go down this path? Like what you're saying sounds really interesting. And the idea of making $1,000 an hour and being listened to and having a conversation at the highest level with the C-suite executives, what would I have to study? I think study a lot of communication, study a lot of um, courses that are super, super high concept right where you have to solve real big problems try to do sponsored projects if they have that in your school where you actually start working with a client you interfere with you know real real clients and you know when you start working as a freelancer later on or even you know a lot of you i'm sure are going to do this during school where they start doing side gigs um if you dread client meetings if you are really scared when you first enter a room with like three, four people in there and they don't know you and you start sweating profusely and you're like, oh my God, like I hate this moment right now. And you have to talk through an hour and present your stuff. 
if, if you think you can't get into this, if you think that that's your worst fear, then you have then, then strategy might not be right for you. Or you might have to really, really work. And, you know, obviously you can go against it. Like try to push yourself into that because the one thing that I believe, and, and Chris, I'm interested in to hear your opinion, that I believe makes a great brand strategist a great brand strategist is emotional intelligence. Mm. Like you have, to, you have to be able to very quickly formulate a report with the person in the room, quickly, you know, take the temperature of everyone there and kind of like, you know, shift and pivot around the meeting to, so that you make a great impression, you get exactly out of the client what you want to get out of, and you treat everyone in the way that they need to be treated within the company, which, you know, which that too is kind of like, it's a fine, it's a fine line. Um, so back to the question, what do you do in college? Um, I think just, just really test your limits when it comes to, you know, like, like being on a podium and speaking to a lot of people and speaking to clients, you know, not, not just fictitious, you know, homework. Mm, okay. I'm going to answer my own question then. Please. I wrote a list there. So if you're in design school, if you're going to study art and design and you, you aspire to become a strategist, what classes would you take? I think the first thing you got to do is you got to think, what are you doing in that design art school? Because the skills are not necessarily related and you might not get the best education. So in the interest of doing public service good here, I'm going to tell you what kind of classes you need to take. You need to take a business class. You need to take a class on marketing, positioning, copywriting. You probably want to launch a company if only just to experience it yourself to see what your pain points are. You probably need to take classes on entrepreneurship, philosophy, rhetoric, and psychology. Notice none of them are about aesthetic and making. Zero percent of these things are. And if you want to be a strategist, that's where I would begin. And now I hope that they actually have these classes in, uh, in you know, in most art colleges. They, they don't. Exactly. That's why. Right. That's the I problem. was stuck in my yeah, you know, graphic <laughs> design world. I'm like, yes. I don't know. Just you were try working to get those. within the problem. Right. Yes. Okay. Uh, now, see, Aaron, because you were interrupting me before. I have no idea what I was going <laughs> to ask Fabian. It was going to be really good. I know what it is. Okay. All right. So, how do we separate? ourselves if we say this is right or wrong for me if i'm a designer and this sounds really exciting and sexy that can make this kind of money how do i know what's right for me because it's not right for everybody if give this, me a test if this is about the money then this may not be right for you okay right so it's not look there's this whole thing that is going on in the future which makes so much sense which is how can we get graphic designers to actually make the money and give the value that, that they're supposed to give and the money that they're supposed to make. And one of these, you know, great strategies is, well, start showing yourself more as a leader. Start to, to infuse yourself into the companies and, and create real solutions. And it all kind of points back to become, become a brand strategist or talk more about brand strategy. And I just don't want anyone to do that for the reason of, oh, I can charge more money. Because... It's just not, it's not the value you give at that point. At that mm -hmm. point, you're still not a brand strategist. Mm -hmm. So going back to what Gary Vee said, um, I think like a couple, a couple of weeks ago on your show, he said, look, graphic designers should work for free until they actually, you know, show value. And even though that was really drastic, but it's Gary Vee, it should be like that, right? I do believe to a certain extent that in the beginning, even for my brand workshop in the beginning, which was a glorified questionnaire, I didn't charge much. I maybe charged a thousand, five hundred, two thousand dollars because I didn't even myself believe in the value I was giving. But as I started doing it more and more, I started to understand that there is a huge value. So I think that in the beginning, don't do it for the money. Do it to see that does it does it stick? Do you like it? Do you enjoy it? Because why learn a new skill if in the end you're not going to enjoy it? Because then you might as well work for a bank, you know, and, and you know, go up in Wall Street and start making more money, way more money than you could ever, ever make, right? Then mm -hmm, it's for the mm -hmm. money. Don't work for the money. That's fine. I hear that loud and clear. But like say, like, I'm intrigued by what you're saying. Forget about the money. I'm intrigued by what you're saying. And you're like, don't get into it if you don't enjoy it. What is it? Give me a couple of examples of the skills or things that you have to do to be a strategist so I can say, ooh, that, that creeps me out or I'm really excited about that. Well, you know, I mean, for instance, if there's a company that just has a merger 
And they're like, oh my God, we're having a merger. This whole thing is going to go down within one month. We need a brand strategist to come in to figure out how are we going to, to merge these two brands? How are we going to communicate to our, our stakeholders? How are we going to look at the brand architecture of two companies and, and, and morph it into one? How are we going to change naming structures? And I need you to fly around between these two headquarters and figure this stuff out. That's, for instance, one thing that a brand strategist would do. Mm -hmm. Or we're a new startup. We've got, you know, like 18 lines of products. We have a couple of months to launch these. We need to really figure out how do we how do we actually address our our customer? Like, how should we where should we, um, you know, launch these? You know, how should the companies, you know, uh, how should these brands be called? Um, how do they differentiate from competitors? Um, you know, and really, you're basically at this point, you're working kind of like a marketing director, but you're a brand director. So you're not as much on the tactical part, you're more on the strategic part of setting the pathway um, and hands-on creating naming structures, right? Like like actually, you know, delivering on that, trademarkable names for, for multinational corporations, stuff like that. That's what a brand strategist does. And it is, in the beginning, it's pretty scary. But on the other hand, it's, it's so much fun because now you're really coming in in a company on the very top level. Um, and you and you really start thinking with the C-suite about these about these decisions. So I have a couple of things. I was just thinking about this when you said this. If you don't like to do research, like really deep research, if you don't like to read, if you don't like to write, to think, to communicate, to be in front of a lot of people, and to sometimes be the center of the conversation, not all the time, because most of the time you should be listening, asking really smart questions, and then just sitting back. If you don't like documenting, if you don't like challenging people in, in terms of what they think based on the data that you've seen, probably this is not right for you. Okay, so I'm going to ask you this question. It's coming in from Blueform on the YouTube chat right now. They're asking, please ask Fabian, is it possible to be a brand strategy company without offering actual design? Absolutely. Absolutely. There, there, there are plenty of brand consultancies that only do strategic work. There's, mm -hmm. there's a lot of them. And they, and they literally get called in for, for the problems that I just discussed. And usually they work with larger Fortune 500 type companies because they understand that now we need a brand strategy company to come in and consult with to actually, to actually figure this out. So, so absolutely. But can you do it as a solopreneur? Absolutely, you can. But I think you should use your graphic design, you know, practice and first start pushing strategy. See if you like it, you know, like like build out an expertise around strategy. And even if it's just one component, right, if you just say, as far as brand strategy goes, goes, I only do this one thing. And that's what I do for my clients on the strategic side. See if it sells. See if you like it. See if you're intimidated. See if you can do the quick thinking that's necessary in meetings, as Chris pointed out. Um, and then if you start seeing, oh, my God, I love this. This is great. I make so much more money doing this. I feel like I'm giving more to my clients and I'm actually really moving the needle. Um, so it works on all levels. Then slowly, like, build out the graphic design or just change your name and have a brand consultancy. And then people just go for for you as the person rather than you as the business. Mm -hmm. I want to read this comment really quick coming from Shima, who you guys may have seen on the show before. She says, I have a BS in advertising from a school of journalism and mass communication. Never did I hear the word positioning used in any class. This stuff needs to be taught everywhere. Amen. Or elsewhere. I'm sorry. Else, elsewhere. Amen. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That, that is shocking, right? Because your background, we just talked about colleges. Yes. And like you have the perfect background to become a brand strategist, right? You, 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 you have it all. And that you never heard about something as fundamental and, and simple, you know, as far as like, you know, like, like the process goes as positioning. Um, I totally agree with you. That's, mm -hmm. uh, that's shocking. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so where else do we take this conversation? I've given you freedom and permission to push the conversation in any which direction, to challenge me if you want. We can have fun because Fabian and I are actually friends. We met many, many years ago, coincidentally, both speaking at a local college here in Santa Monica. And then from there, we're like, oh, we're both art center. Oh, we're kind of a certain age and we like 80s music. Okay, Depeche Mode, I'm in. So a friendship <laughs> I don't has blossomed. That. Oh, I remember it all. Because <laughs> you're a big Depeche Mode head, right? That's true. Yes, you are. It's not televised. <laughs> and so now it's interesting to watch you in your career trajectory and how you've simplified and scaled down so you can focus up. And you've had really great results because of that, right? Yeah. I mean, look, for me, I, I figured 
everyone always says bigger is better, right? Like more people, right? Like you have to have a real agency. You have to have, you know, huge clients and lots of awards and lots of people. And I did it and I didn't enjoy it. Like mm -hmm. it didn't personally fulfill me. I also didn't feel like, you know, financially it, you know, it, it took me where I wanted to be. Um, so, you know, I, th I think you got to you got to have the balls to just at some point Ooh. say, Yes. Yeah. Okay. Indeed. Okay. At least I didn't say. <laughs> at least That's I didn't say fewer, <laughs> more, fewer. You know. Um, no, you gotta have that, right? Like yeah. you, you gotta have that. You know, whatever hustle or you gotta have that thing to just say, I'm okay to understand that suddenly I need to I need to change my entire life. I need to yes. change my entire. You need company. to have the courage, the intestinal fortitude. To do this, I know what you're it's trying what you're to say. <laughs> I'm going to read a comment here from Bellwether Brand. Bellwether Brand says Chris describes doing discovery and brand strategy like therapy that you draw insights from the client stakeholders. Do you see it that way, Fabian? If you go on Instagram and you hashtag Brand Therapy Thursdays, you're going to see me talk Plug. about brand therapy. <laughs> it's all I do. It's like I've been doing this for a year. Brand therapy Thursday, right? Brand therapy. It's what Thursdays. it is. It's therapeutic, and I think that's why we talk so much about you have to like interacting with people. You have to like taking this out. And you know, when when I when I prepped quote unquote for for today's show because it really is <laughs> off the cuff. But I'm like, what am I going to tell these people, right? right? Like how much of my life story? And I thought back to this career psychologist, which is such a weird story. And then I thought back to when I changed my company around, and I had this guy come in. Both of these people, what they did is they, you know, I spent a day with them. They charged a boatload of money and everyone's like, wow, really? Like, is that necessary? Do I really need this? And both of these people completely changed my life, completely changed my life. Right. And I feel that that's what I love doing now. Right. Like I go into a company and within one day I can change their life. To me, that is that is huge. And to me, that's so much more fulfilling yeah. than spending two weeks creating a logo, having more revisions, spending another two weeks on it. Everyone's getting frustrated. Um, you know, and even though we still do that, we design logos and we really graded it, it starts different because we have that background of this is the brand now. This is these are all the goals we need to actually fulfill with the logo. At that point, people can look back at that brand strategy and say, that's right. We have to solve for that. My designer can do that. I can do that. My client can do that. So logos get done in you know a week or two because everyone says, "Oh, perfect, we solve for all of these problems." But Chris, I really think it's. Um, I really think we should try to get as many as many questions from the I'm, audience. I'm so yeah. ready. I got oh, a couple I'm of good so ones. Ready. If they're okay. ready, we're ready. Aaron, you're first. Go. So from Julian Bonehow, can you gain the knowledge? Oh, or how can you gain the knowledge of a specific industry to be able to help? And also, how do you convince the company that you understand that industry? So, this is interesting. <laughs> I'm looking forward to, to your thoughts on this too, Chris. Um, I always come, it's this big thing. Clients say, look, I really need you to have a lot of know-how in my industry. And then I come in and I say, I am so glad I have no know-how in your industry. And then they're just perplexed because everyone's making up that they have know-how in the industry. And I just say, look, no, I don't want to have know-how in your industry because I want you to disrupt. I want you to be different. I want to come in, you know, from a clean slate and then learn with you and then start understanding once we engage. But I don't need to know everything about every industry. I don't need to work with a blockchain client and be like the perfect, like I, I, I know everything about blockchain. I don't. Usually it's fairly easy to understand the basics, especially when you sit with the C-suite and you talk about everything, right? So I think, I think you should really know a lot of things. You should just know enough to be dangerous to hold a conversation with pretty much anyone, right? So I think it's more about common knowledge and about reading a whole lot. And I'm not talking about reading you know, books all the time. I'm talking about periodicals. I'm talking about get a lot of newsletters about, you know, from, from Bloomberg Business Week to Fortune to Forbes to, you know, like, like business magazines. And to me, they are more exciting than any communication arts or graphics ever was, right? Because to me, th I can read about how companies actually the problems that they have and how they solve it and what's going on right now and what is trending. So if a new client calls me and they're saying, hey, we're in the CBD industry, I'm like, okay, well, perfect. Let's talk because I totally understand it. I'm not the guy that, that I don't need to use it, but I understand that that industry right now is really hot. I understand the problems. You know, I see it popping around. Um, so I think that's enough to just have 
common knowledge. Yeah. Okay, so here's what we're going to need to do because I'm going to have to get you to answer questions faster if we want more questions in. So Quick. Yes, I'm no. Warn yes, you. no. Okay. And in case you guys are joining us late, I want to tell you guys how you can get a copy. Look at this. How you guys can get a copy of one of these books, okay? I've been given some by Fabian to give away to you guys. So here's my slide. Guys, if you want to get a copy of this book, here's what you need to do. Share something that you learned. Take one nugget, one phrase, one idea, whatever it is from today and be creative with how you express this and share it with us on Instagram. Make sure you tag both of us at underscore Finian underscore. And Finian has, it's like one N, Fin and I-E-N. And then of course me at the Chris Doe, okay? And that's how we're gonna give away these books. So Fabian and I will pick some amazing creative people to give the books away too. And we'll contact you on Instagram, okay? So here's a couple of questions. I want you to answer this as Super quick. fast Super as quick. you can. Yes. As clear and as emphatic as you can, okay? Is the logo a brand? No. Why not? I shouldn't I shouldn't say more. Well, a logo well, is not a brand. Short. Why? A logo helps a brand to be established and it's part of a lot of different ingredients that makes a brand. Okay. Is a logo important to the success of a company? To a certain extent, yes. But you want me no, to be no, you're too short. Then, no, there's a difference between like one word answers <laughs> and then a, a whole monologue about it. Look, a, logo, Give me a, little bit a more. logo can absolutely attract people to a company. It can help differentiate a company and it can set the tone for the entire graphic language around the company. All of that, that consistency around your entire, um, you know, user interface and, um, you know, corporate ID is super, super important. Okay. So yes, it's important. Okay. Let me ask you this other question. Is Amazon's logo good? I think it's pretty good. Oh, yeah? Yes. You know, I like I like I like the story. I like I like the smile. I like mm. the A to C, you mm -hmm. know? There's a smile from A to C. It's pretty good. Okay, fantastic. What is a logo worth? Um, it you know, what's a painting worth? It depends on the viewer, right? Um, <laughs> no, seriously. Look, I mean, what is a logo worth? A logo your logo might yeah. be worth $2, mm -hmm. or it might be worth you know, maybe $200,000. How do we determine the value then? We determine the value by the size of the company, by the reach of the company, and by how complex the strategic work is to get to that logo. So are you saying the same amount of work put into a logo will cost more depending on the buyer? So we charge people who have more money, more money, and is that fair? It's debatable, which of course we're doing here. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we are. You see the setup? Uh, I see the setup. It's amazing. You're, you're it catching on. Yes. Uh, thank you. It took me a while. Yeah, a little um, bit. No, it's debatable. Look, I mean, I don't think that I don't think that if I design the logo um, for the local bakery, that just because I sit down at my computer and I design a logo, that it's identical with designing a new logo for British Petrol for BP, right? It's very different. It's like wake up people, right? It's like there's you need to you need to have like six months of meetings before you even get to sit down at the computer. So I think that is that big that big um, you know difference of that. Like you actually have to think about the process, how the process changes the larger a company is. I think I want a clear answer. Is it ethical to charge somebody more money? because they can afford it. For example, the, the question I, I get asked quite often, I'm glad I'm not the one who has to answer this, is that if a person's starving for water, you're going to charge them more than the person who's not starving for water. It's dying of thirst. Well, look, I, I, think, I think it is... We have fixed fees pretty much at my consultancy, so that, that should give you a good idea, right? But then yet, you know, like even if we charge, you know, $20,000, $30,000 for, for, for a logo and a package, I might charge much more to a client because I know that that they have more money, they are bigger, it's more important, it's going to be more involving. So yes, I think it is it is ethical. I think it is Aren't ethical. Aren't you just being greedy but then? I'm not no, absolutely not because I do believe that more work go, goes into it. If I think I can do the oh, same really? thing with a startup that I can do with a Fortune 500, mm -hmm. then I wouldn't do it and I would just say it's the exact same thing. So oh, I I think I think it's not so much about, about ethical, it's more about understanding that the process will change. Okay, by the way, I don't disagree with you. I'm just setting you up here. I know. Okay, here's a question <laughs> from Kyle. Kyle's like, ask him if strategy can be intuitive. Can you do strategy intuitively? Yes. How? You can absolutely do it intuitively. You can intuitively, a lot of strategy is intuition, 
because you do it so often, you understand how brands are being built, you understand consumers, you, you live in the zeitgeist, you live in the now, and you just intuitively say, well, I, I put all of these thoughts together, and you have this quick thought where just your intuition says, I think you should totally pivot into this direction. And if the client doesn't question your intuition and doesn't say, well, I got to see data, we got to do A-B tests and all that stuff, um, then you know that his or her intuition is in sync with yours. And then you know you've got something going on. Then you know that it's good. But you can totally do it with intuition. A lot of it is. Huh. That's interesting. You you answer questions in a very different and un, an unexpected way than I think you will. This is very fascinating. Okay. Well, I hope I don't let you down too much. Chris. No, because we're selling books right now for you. <laughs> so I can see that people are buying books. So I just ordered a book. Love this man. Aaron, your turn. Ask the question, please. So I was wondering, like, um, what's like the hard part of being a strategist? Mm. Well, I think I think when I talked about what it takes, um, you know, the, the the human interaction and kind of like the pressure on getting something right and you know, like leading everything, everyone in the room to 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 the same conclusion because that's the conclusion that you want to move forward to. Um, that's the biggest thing, right? And to really to really understand, even though I said you don't under, have to understand an industry when you first start working with them, well, then you have to understand an industry very quickly, right? So it's it takes it takes a lot of energy you know you know real energy of you to actually constantly be on to constantly think all day long and make these decisions and not say well i need to ask 10 other people no you just got to make decisions very quickly fantastic in a good way yes yeah, so somebody's asking bellwether brand is asking is there a framework to do this like core and yes there is cuz fabian is going to be launching his framework pretty soon and how much is your framework going to be it's going to be a thousand nine hundred and it's basically what's it called by the way it's called e-resonate so my workshop is called resonate um with a d as in aid you aid someone to resonate um and so that's my usual workshop that i do hands-on with my clients those eight nine hour days and since i can't be everywhere at all times i figured i already have that framework why don't I repackage that framework into an online course that people can take, um, you know, bootstrapped, bootstrapped entrepreneurs, but also, you know, designers, some of you where they can say, look, I like a lot of these ideas. I'm going to utilize that for myself. Perfect. Our friend David Coe, who's also a pro member, is asking this. What would you recommend as first steps to an individual who's interested in transitioning to doing brand strategy from a motion design background? That's super interesting. Well, look, if you're if you're a motion designer, like any designer, I'm sure in the beginning there's client interaction, right? So basically, in the beginning, you say, hey, fill out this project brief, or let's talk about your project. Just hold there for a second and say, okay, what would make my piece better that I normally don't ask? Like, how much do I need to understand about that spot or about the background or about, you know, the trailer or whatever you do? How much do I need to understand of that client? And start thinking deeper on what is going to get you to a better result quicker and how you can kind of set the client up to do more better work in the future based on that little piece of work that you're about to do. And then create a questionnaire and say, look, I need to meet you. I, you know, if it's on the phone or in person, I need to sit down with you and we need to really go through that because then you're going to start getting more and more information of the person and then you're going to start to be able to actually like shift your, your creative brief into something that might be much more exciting, much more strategic. And I think that's how I would get started if I'd be in motion design. But Chris... I want you to answer this question. I'm gonna take the fifth. I'll yes. answer this some other time. This is yes. too, this is it's, your it, this is your life. It, it's it, oh, okay. Fine, David. Twist my arm. I'm gonna tell you how to do it. I'm gonna tell you because I want to ask Fabian actually more questions. So, here's how you do it. If you're a motion graphics person, how can you use brand strategy? So, usually you're asked to make a video. You're asked to make a thing, and you could switch out the word motion graphics or video with a package or a logo or an identity system or whatever it is or an interior design the first thing that you need to do is you start to have to ask the question of why are we doing this and what kind of impact will it make on the business because what we want to do is to shift our thinking away from the making towards the thinking and diagnosing so once we truly understand the problem we want to do this video because we're trying to raise money for a fundraising initiative that we're doing oh how did we do last year oh we raised two hundred thousand oh that's fantastic so was that a good goal for you? No, no, no. We want to raise a million. We fell 20% or 80% short of our goal. So why don't you think it works? So you get into the conversation of diagnosing the problem. And then ultimately somewhere, they're going to tell you what the problem is, but they can't see it. 
because as my friend Melinda has said before, you can't read the label from inside the bottle. They're like, what is that? We just And you as the objective outsider with relatively little information about their business, you're not caught up in the running of the business. You're like, it's right there. It says right on the outside that the reason why it didn't work last time was because you made it for this kind of person and this is the donor that you're looking for. And they're like, oh my God, you are a genius. Well, here's the bill for that. And now we can craft a video with the messaging and the motion graphics to answer that problem in particular. So Dave, you know, you can talk to me and we'll, we'll get deeper in that. But there we go. I, I have more questions for you and I, I love where the, questions is going, where the questions are going right now. Here we go. <clears throat> As a brand strategist, this is from Thought Harvest. What do you struggle with the most? 30 seconds on the clock, go. It's very similar to the question before. What do you struggle the most? You struggle the most with, you know, like, like just with, with juggling all of these different clients, these different industries, and constantly being, quote unquote, in the zone, right? You have to get into the zone with each client. And within seconds, you have to be able to provide solutions and to kind of like pivot, pivot their thinking. Um, and that's, it's more about like being in the spot and being really quick. And that takes, you know, a lot of energy. Perfect. Okay, here's another great question coming in from Brian Cole. Is like a lot of people talk about how much you charge to do strategy. Like if you're going to charge eight, nine, ten thousand dollars to do one of these workshops, what is it somebody walks away with? What is the scope of what you deliver for that amount of money? I deliver way too much for that money. Let's, let's, <laughs> so I literally, so, so I work with a lot of, um, you know, fresh companies. So even though this might be far, Fortune 500s, they create a new product or it is bootstrapped uh, companies that actually start, start a new company, a new brand. So I really figure out how do you need to position the brand? Like, what is the big why behind your company? You know, and then go all the way to like, let's analyze the competitors. Let's look at where your sweet spot is. Let's figure out, you know, kind of like the, the beginnings of your company culture. You know, what are your core values? You know, what is the personality of the brand that once social media hits and once you actually start writing copy, how, what, should that, what should that personality be like? You know, like in what kind of tagline direction would you go if you have three words to describe the company? What would it be? And, 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 and how does it change how people see your company than when you first walked into this workshop, right? So in the end, it's, you know, it, we, we talk about target audiences. We actually create personas in that workshop. Um, it is a lot of that framework that I'm sure Chris is using and a lot of other people are using. Um, but, you know, you kind of, you kind of start figuring out some ways that you make it your own. You know, I throw in things like the brand DNA. How do you describe your brand in one word? Um, and it's kind of like it goes to that it goes to that like climax at the very end of that day where you just keep building up like how how can you come to a focused that focused of a description of your brand that you have one word and in the end most brands that's all they need fantastic here's a question from mark harman can you ask if he includes research and analysis in your services like market research competitive analysis swats surveys and focus groups etc analytics do you do that at some point I do, and usually we outsource it, and we are very, very honest with the client that if they do want that type of work, um, we, we can do it, but we, we give it to someone else um, if they want to have that benchmark. But is that, that's not part of your core deliverables or no. services? Okay, no. just being clear about that. Aaron, back to you, sir. You've been asking really good questions. Fire away. There's just so many good ones here. Um, kind of put me on the spot here. I thought that's what you were doing. Um... I don't know. Do you have more? You can come back to me. All right, I'll circle back to you. Yeah. Okay, I don't know. Uh, Fabian, is there something that we should be asking you that we haven't asked you yet that you feel really strongly about? <laughs> um, I don't know. I mean, look, I, I, I think that the whole idea of brand strategy, it's just such a big word, and I think a lot of people are either excited about it because they want to make more money or they're scared of it because they feel like it's so much work. And I really think in the end, it's kind of like an in-between, right? You, you just start being more strategic with your clients and you start seeing if walking into these big rooms is actually right for you. And if the strategies that you set out in the beginning for your clients, if you start seeing those actually change ROI, if you start seeing that they actually make an impact to your clients. And once you start seeing something work, obviously you do more of it. So I think that that it's, you know, it's like the word branding. Brand strategy is very misunderstood. Like mm -hmm. people don't quite know what it is. But I think that in the end, brand strategy is really the idea that you set you set up a bigger goal for a company, and instead of thinking like um, you know like a business plan, you think like a brand plan. Like how do you how do you oust the most competitors? How do you stand out over time? You know, and how do you how do you onboard a certain kind 
of clientele over the next couple of months or years. And that's really when you start thinking big picture about a brand. Yeah. Okay, so Hardin is asking this question. I believe we've already answered this. He's like, is there an online course or book I can start to learn strategy? There's a couple of books, but you can also take the course that Fabian will be launching called E, what did you, you say again? E-Resonate. And it's e going to be at eResonate.com, which has not launched yet. Okay. You can also look at our core strategy framework. A couple of books that you can recommend, Fabian? Um, for brand strategy, you know what? Read everything that Marty Neumeyer writes. Yeah. Um, and even Melinda's quote is actually Marty's quote. And because, because everyone keeps requoting because yeah. it is just, and she might not even know, right? Yeah. Because the whole idea the of time. like the label and the bottle, yeah. and, you know, you can't see. He's, he's just super prolific. And yes. what I love about his books, and, and I tried to write the same way, it's just so to the point. Like mm -hmm. you can really quickly go through it. And he is a true brand strategist. So um, if you like his thinking, um, you know, then, then I think, you know, it's time to start moving into that direction. Yeah, so let me say it again. It's Marty Neumeyer. He's written several books. Brand Flip, The Brand Gap, The Designful Company, Zag, and something else. He's written a lot of books, and they're really, really good because he writes the book the way that I think Fabian and I like to consume information. He's taken the, the time to write as few words as possible and using imagery, graphics, and, and graphs to communicate complex ideas that you can process almost right away. So the literal amount of time that you read from cover to cover is very short, but the amount of information that you can use and apply tomorrow is fantastic. And if you wanted to develop your own framework, you could probably literally read three of his books and reverse engineer it yourself. Right. He lays it out right, right there for no, you. No, totally. Or, right. or you could even read How to Launch a Brand, my first book in the first chapter. It's the same thing. <laughs> Hey, um, talking about which, yes. I, I, not not my book, but uh, you know, talking about what you just said yeah. about like you know, like how can you minimize content to like you know to say everything in the in the shortest amount as possible? And you were pushing me to do that with, yeah. with my question, with my answers. Um, but I think that's what that's what design is about, right? Graphic design. You mm -hmm. the less is more, right? If you what else can you take away from a logo? And it makes it actually stronger. And the same discipline applies to to brand strategy. Right, like, what can you take away to make the point in the clearest way so consumers understand it? Right, yep. like, what what does a company stand for? One thing in the end, that's what it should be. It should stand for one thing. How do you pick that word? You did on my podcast, remember? I don't remember. I put you on the spot. I forgot but, what. It but was. what is the word though? I mean, not for you well, or look, for look, me. I mean, but look, how do you help? A company figure out from all the words they can choose, from not choosing the typical words like w innovative, just, authentic, just, authentic. But innovative. it's not because look, Coca Cola is happiness, right? It, it, you know, and and Holly Davidson is freedom, and we all know that. Like like you can ask about some of the big brands, and we just come up with that word mm -hmm. because it's the emotion that we feel year over year. Um, with a brand and usually it's not innovation usually it's not creativity usually it is a word that is a very simple word that you might not even be able to own but if you start pushing that word more and more through your communications people will just feel that word and I, I think I think that is that is the beauty of most of most great brands and of course I try to push the people that I talk to to come up with a word that is as ownable as possible, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, somebody's saying, Eric's like, I need to make a hat that says fantastic because maybe I say that a lot. Okay. I have one that should say fab. And fab. then we're. we're you both. have it? No, I don't. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Is that company still around, Fab? Uh, I think so. I think okay. so. I was actually more referring to my own name and being fabulous because you're fantastic. But, you know, that was a really <laughs> far stretch. And I... Why don't you tell another joke? You got another joke, Andy? I don't do jokes. <laughs> I'm a very serious person. I don't do jokes. Are you Austrian know, it comes serious? with my accent. It's like, we don't do jokes. <laughs> das ist nicht lustig. Okay, Aaron, I think it's almost time for us to wrap up the show here. Aaron, do you have a question for us? I had a funny question for Fabian. Good. Uh, this guy, Carlos, is asking, why should I buy your book? How is that funny? This is a great question. <laughs> <laughs> a, why? a, because it has so much 
amazing information in it and it is way too cheap. Um, B, because you just watched me for an hour and you're like, oh my God, I want to learn more. Um, C, how long do you have, Chris? Because, you? you know, I mean, there's so many reasons. If you want to learn about <laughs> story, chapter one. <laughs> chapter keep one. going, keep going. Yeah, you know, it's like, I don't know. Yeah. Look, I mean, you should, you should buy bigger than this because it gives, um, because I, I researched startups that are based on commodity products and that still make it big and that's just ridiculous yeah. mm. you know in 2019 how can startups without any innovation make it right and so there are eight chapters in it and it's just these quick like tidbits of like oh companies actually make it because they're based on heritage i mean think about shinola right shinola has nothing going for it but heritage that's it Right. Otherwise, it's the same type of product, et cetera, et cetera. But you can watch the YouTube show that I did with uh, Chris where I talked about the book much more. Yeah. So is this book title uh, overcompensating? Because I'm going to come up with the Asian it's version of this. pretty big. It's going to be called small, no, you're not. Smaller Than This. I sold the Chinese rights. <laughs> so you're not than coming this. out. <laughs> <laughs> you, re you ruined my joke, Fabian. You walked all it. over it. I get it. But look, you, Jeez, give, you, give me, you give me crap for saying you know certain words and then you do those things. <laughs> it's just not fair. It never is. It's never fair here. You know? It's such a no, I just time type of conversation. <laughs> Where's that boxing bell when you need it? <laughs> it's right here. <laughs> there you go. And now we're on. I'm, I'm quick and on now it. now we're going to have to wrap up. It's okay, too bad. It's time for us to wrap up. I was in the beginning taking notes, but now I can't even take notes anymore there's too much stuff that's going on let's see what you guys come up with i'm going to let you guys know one more time just one more time how you guys can get a free copy i'll pay for the shipping fabian's printed the books here we go this is how you get a copy of bigger than this asian edition coming soon share something that you learned from today be super creative get your creative juices flowing do some hand letter stuff do a cool layout using all that swiss design that you know and love and you need to tag us both on Instagram at underscore Finian underscore at the Chris Doe. Okay, that's how you get a copy of the book. Parting thoughts, gentlemen. Jonah, Aaron, Fabian, is there anything that we should talk about? I think we've sufficiently answered the questions from the audience. And we've answered the question that was posed at the beginning of the show. Okay, I don't have time to do a recap. Oh, no recap. I, I'm going to do the summary recap. Okay. It's just, there. it's kind of pathetic because I was reading comments and making fun of Fabian. So it's just, I didn't have time <laughs> to write, guys. I really didn't. And look, we will, I, I will definitely answer questions on, on your comments. Yes, too, right? that, so that is gonna, one thing. Gonna it's very true. Chime in. For everybody that wants to engage with Fabian, he is very good on social media. He's, if you write a comment or a question and you are going to phrase it well, he will answer it. If it's a bunch of gibberish, she's not going to answer it. Thank you. Yeah, I just want to be sure. <laughs> okay, so I have a pretty weak sauce summary here, but I'm going to just do it anyways because, you know, I was listening to you guys talk. Anyways, summary, summary. Content marketing, you guys. This is how Fabian was able to build up his empire to know who your buyers are and create something that they would value, that they would value. So for him, what's been very effective is not to create for other creatives, but to create things for clients. And you need to get out of that design bubble. You need to write, you got to record a podcast, you got to interview people, you got to go on the stage, I know, scary, and speak. Convert the people, let them know who you are. And you can make videos on YouTube if you're good with video. And there's so many other things. Now, he's taken on a very interesting arc and a journey from being a boy who didn't know what he was doing in Austria to becoming, <laughs> right? To becoming I was a globe trotting yes. brand strategist that charges ten thousand bucks to do workshops, and you could do that. He's authored two books. Here's how you can get in touch with Fabian. His name is Fabian Gerhalter at Finian.com. Hopefully, I got all that right. On Twitter, it's Finian Insights. Oh, I put two ends in. There. I messed up. Let me fix that slide. Sorry. Somebody talk for a second. I got. I got a couple of takeaways that I heard. Go ahead. They're kind of just like bullet point things that you said that were interesting. Yeah, go ahead. Go for One it. is you said, give away idea nuggets for free, especially at first in that meeting. You got to give them some for free. That's a good idea. Mm. And then you said, it's more about being a fellow entrepreneur and a guide. It's not so much about the logo or the work. You said, you have to separate yourself from the work so that you can be objective to make the strategic business decisions. Can I quote you? This is really good. <laughs> <laughs> Those are good. And this one was good too. There's no reason to have design if you don't have strategy. Wow. And Those are fighting know, words. Yeah. Amen. Those are fighting words. That was a good friend. one. Yes. I'm getting back in the ring anytime. Right now. <laughs> and the last one is why learn a skill if you're not going to enjoy it? 
Ooh. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. It's a lot of quotable right, things there. You, you might you might uh, win a book, but then I noticed one in Chris's office. You can <laughs> but Aaron doesn't read, so don't worry about it. Ooh, <laughs> no, he does. He does. Thanks. He does. Boom. I'm just messing around. That's All right. I fixed the slide. <laughs> I fixed the slide. There he is at Finian Insights on Twitter and underscore Finian underscore on Instagram. You guys, I'm going to play the intro, uh, exit music, but let's here we go. Thanks for guys for watching. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and hit that bell for notification. If you want to know about future events and guests coming on our show, you have to go to Facebook. I know some of you guys hate Facebook. You're too young for it, but that's the way you guys can find out about what's going on. Okay. Big shout out. Heartfelt thanks to all our sustaining members, future fam, donation donuts. I know who you are. I love you guys. See you guys next time. Peace. <laughs>